Hey Troops, Johnny Smith here, back with another LEGO Star Wars September 2015 set review. And this time I have got the First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter, set number 75101, ages 8 to 14. Comes with 517 pieces and is retailing for £60 or $70. Pretty hefty. I'd probably say the worst price set out of this entire line, which is it's actually saying something because we've got some pretty expensive sets. But this one, I do not see a single reason. The only possible reason this would be expensive would be because, you know, oh, got large panels and stuff like that. Which I'm afraid is just not true. It seems that we got this. 2012 TIE Fighter, which pretty much all the larger panels are more or less the same, at least similar in a few ways, uh, and this cost 50 pounds, as it should, and it's like, I think it even had less pieces, I'm not sure, um, so I don't know, this is like 200 pieces off, I'm afraid, I do not know, for the life of me, why it's so expensive, um, I mean, 60 pounds, perhaps you could get away with that, for 570 pieces, but 50 pounds is the absolute best price, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm afraid I somehow doubt you're gonna ever get it down to that sort of price. If you do, it'll be very beautifully, and even that's a if. Because the only reason this will go down to price, the only reason any set goes down to price is of course because it's not selling, because people aren't buying it as much, you know, the hype is going down for it. This will normally happen after some time when a set's been released. I sort of doubt it's gonna happen to this and the other set, mainly because we are in three months until December, which of course the actual film comes out, and the entire time this will be such a hype thing, you know, it's like, forget about it. Between now and then, I strongly doubt it's going to go down by anything significantly on any sides, realistically. After that, there's still a lot of Star Wars hype, and this looks like it's going to be a prominent vehicle in all three films. Probably not the sequels, I mean, sorry, the spin-off things, but we'll see. The point is... Throughout its entire career, if you will, you know, until it's retired, this is most likely you go for a fair amount of money. It may go down in price here and there, but if you get it £50 or $50, then I consider yourself pretty lucky because it's really, it's got so much hype around it. This could be pretty expensive for some time. I recommend trying to wait, go on eBay for it, something like that, I don't know, something on the design. But even so, if you can though, I still do very much recommend it because it's still a really, really cool set. Oh my god. I love this set, this set is so cool, and I know it's very controversial, but believe it or not, I actually like these colours more than I like the regular TIE Fighter. I know, I know it's very controversial, but I seriously do, I, I love the colours, I think it's modern, sleek, I just think it looks incredible, the minifigures are awesome, and even though it does look very similar to the old TIE Fighter, and well it is, there are a few design changes other than just the actual colour of it, like a few different uh, not gear, but you know, different features and things like that, which, you know, I'm very intrigued to see in the actual film, which is very, very cool, but we're just going to stop talking right now. By the way, the link to the Let's Roll this will be down in the description, so go check that out. Also, one other thing, tomorrow there will be, or oh, today, maybe I'm not sure when you've seen this, but basically 6th of September, uh, I will do a live stream with another YouTuber, and we're going to talk about some stuff. I will do a live Let's Build of another set, so please stick around and watch that. But yeah, anyway, that is more to for this. Let's just now go straight in to these incredible minifigures. Alright, so first up we have the First Order Officer. So this guy is actually really cool. I'm liking this guy very much. Of course, he reminds me very much of the officers we've got like in previous sets recently, like the Star Destroyer, some other recent sets, you know, the new hats and things like that. So it's pretty cool. But if you want to build your First Order Army, then you're definitely going to need this guy because he's a very cool minifigure. I mean, honestly, he's not a massive amount about him, and he's pretty similar to the previous, like, officers we have had before. He doesn't have any leg printing, unfortunately. I'm not sure if that just means because he doesn't have a lot of detail on the actual character or something, but it doesn't seem to be a massive amount about him. Of course, the back is also pretty plain, again, similar to officers we've had in the back past. So, yeah, he's got um, clear wearing gloves there, so it's pretty cool. I'd say the only real thing about him, you know, is his hat, uh, which obviously shows his rank as an officer. Very nice, very nice, completely unique. I somewhat presume we'll get more of these sort of guys, maybe in somewhat different colours, the same way we've got Imperial officers. This would be very, very cool to see. You see uh, his face printing right there. Very nice. I'm not sure what sort of skin tone you would call that. Mixed? I don't know. I don't really know. But um, even so, very nice as you can see. I don't think this is a particular character, although it might be. I mean, of course, his name is just First Order Officer. 
but yeah, so still pretty cool. You, they probably just add them to set to, to uh, you know, be an addition to your army. That's very nice. But yeah, so this guy is very, very cool. Glad they added him. You know, better late than never. I presume we will get more of these um, in the films and, you know, years to come. More of these guys who want to build up your first order army. Seems like a pretty generic officer. So pretty nice. Really nice guy to have, though. Very much glad they included him in the set. Uh, somewhat similar to the 2012 one where they just sort of included a few extra minifigures which don't actually go in the set. They're just sort of there for the sake of, you know, whatever. But still very nice minifigure. Uh, I'm liking him, and yeah, that's more it to the First Order Officer. I think it's just move on to the First Order Crew. So next up we have the First Order Crew, and not to sound racist, but oh my lord, this guy is so black. Like, look at him. Oh my days, he is so unbelievably black. Quite frankly, my camera is somewhat having a somewhat difficult trying just trying to pick him up fully, because the details on him are really difficult. I mean, I, I presume this must, they can't just be Lego, it must be like the fact Star Wars didn't have a lot of detail, it can't just be Lego's bad printing, but look at how basic his printing is, it's ridiculous. It's somewhat incredible how basic all this printing is. It's the absolute most generic printing imaginable, quite frankly you could easily sharpie this sort of stuff. But anyway, it's still pretty cool though, of course, just like the officer, the really unique thing about him is his helmet, which, I mean, I thought the Death Star Trooper ones were kind of weird and how they look out of those. This one is like a whole nother league of its own. I mean, how on earth? What? This is not possible. I'm sorry, that's just not possible to have a helmet like this. How on earth does he see through? But regardless, um, he has a pretty generic face. I'm kind of glad they think it's a clone face. Kind of something different, that's always nice. You don't have a two-star face, just, you know, very generic, very standard face. And really, that's what I like. You know, I like the fact we're getting different faces because, you know, they are different. Um, so that's very nice. Very good. He comes with a little pistol, which the officer doesn't. But, you know, even so, this guy is still very cool. The helmet, I guess, is very cool. It's a unique design. I presume we'll probably get a few of these every here and there as well. Similar to, like, some of the other um, like officers and, like, other crew, Imperial people we've seen in other sets. Um, but, you know, nothing too special. He does look really cool. And just like the officer, I'm glad they got him. They probably just add him for the sake of adding him somewhere because, you know, they want to add more figures to the set. But um, even so, he is very cool. I'm glad I added him. And despite the fact his helmet is just, I mean, it, it brings ridiculous to a whole new level. I thought the Death Star one was a little weird, but this is, this is something. It looks like a duckbill platypus. I mean, what is he? What, what is he? I'm sorry. Anyway, that's much it, Tim, though. Let's just move on, though. We have two, not one, two pilots. And let's just go on to them right now. Alright, so next up we have a First Order TIE Pilot. Now, we technically do get two of these, believe it or not, because uh, there is actually two slots of pilots, one of which, though, isn't really a pilot slot issue. I'll explain it in a minute. But uh, even so, we do get two of them. They are exactly the same, so I don't really feel I need to show you both of them. But effectively, here they are. That's two of them. This guy, oh my lord, he's the best pilot, hands down, we've ever had. And that is saying something. I mean, a lot of people are saying the one that comes with Pose X-Wing is brilliant. And it is, the printing and all that is so amazing. The helmet design, it all looks really cool. But something about this, the way that they've completely changed up the helmet. The fact it's got a natural physical tube coming down. Something about, I really love this helmet design. Also the fact I just love this sort of armor, you know, clone and stormtrooper armor. He comes by with a pistol as well as the other one, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so his helmet is incredible, absolutely incredible. Of course, it's the same mold. Is it the same mold? I'm actually not sure it is. It might be a unique mold. I'm not even sure. It might be a completely unique mold. I was going to say it's the same mold as like something else, but I realised with the tube and these little things up here, it might be a completely unique mold, which is really cool, because normally it just gives a standard stormtrooper design and just paint it black. So this is very, very nice to give it a completely new design. Look in the back. Back is very basic, you know, nothing too special there. But I'm really loving this helmet. I mean, the helmets of all these guys are so amazing. Oh my word. This is arguably one of the best armies to build one of because it's just the variations of just everything about it. It feels like a proper army. So yeah, just taking it off though. By the way, this is all solid plastic, uh, except 
for this. Look at that. See? It's rubber. Isn't that cool? It's rubber. But anyway, so you do get a generic clone face, unfortunately. Technically speaking, it's a trooper face, I so. The detailing, despite the fact that it's somewhat covered up, the detailing on this is still very nice. It's got this chrome look to it. Very good. Very good indeed. I'm loving this look. All across the torso, very nice indeed. Very, very nice. I'm loving it with the helmet and everything. I just think it looks amazing. Oh my word, I love this guy so much. Like one of the best pilots ever, hands down. This guy is so cool. Uh, and the fact we get two of them is just so nice. So nice. The minifig in the set. Minifig is realistically in a lot of these sets. are just brilliant. Just brilliant. But yeah, so this guy is extremely cool. But yeah, I think I want to get to him then. Uh, as I said, there are two of them, which means we do get two slots for the first time ever. This is one of the big differences between this and the 20, or just previous, you know, original trilogy TIE Fighters, is the fact that this has two pilots, believe it or not. But I'll show you that in a minute. That being said, let us now go on into the TIE Fighter itself. Just a little mention, we do get a brick separator, so, you know, there you go. Nothing too special there. Go on a TIE Fighter then. This thing is pretty cool. It actually feels a somewhat heavier and more bulky than the previous incarnation of it. So that's very nice. Moving on then, realistically, as I said, uh, there isn't a massive amount of changes in terms of like, I don't know, design or stuff like that. More just color as opposed to the 2012 one. But even so, we'll go through it. So the panels, in my opinion, look amazing. We've got the gray here. I think it's more studs, in my personal opinion, than the previous 2012 in incarnation. You see there seems to be more sort of studs, but I'm not so much as me. Bear in mind this is very dusty, but you know. Uh, but we also got the stuff. It's a sticker, by the way. It really, there's like four stickers in the entire set. It's ridiculous how few. It's really cool because I'm very nice detailing. Of course, just like all Tie Fighters, it's basically just build the wings twice, which is somewhat annoying, but obviously it's pretty understandable. But of course, the wings themselves really is nothing massive to see here. You know, uh, and also just a little trivia for you, the whole reason I think you can probably guess is that they're meant to be solar panels, these things, on the normal TIE Fighters, but of course this seems like it reflects sunlight, but that's just a little trivia by Science Geek, just asking that, you know, it seems like this sort of colour would reflect it rather than absorb it, but never mind, <laughs> never mind, um, anyway, there's nothing really much to say about, about these things as such, just the actual look of it, just the um, difference in colour is very nice though very very nice indeed they are hinged in by the way if you're wondering they are hinged in by these this mechanism so yeah and then simply like that Duh. put it in Oop, come on yeah, come on and there we go easy but uh yeah moving on to the actual of course main bit look at this i love this color i just love it. i don't really know why this section is red and this isn't but you know I'm sure there's a reason and it's so cool so cool a big thing is of course we have the weapons down here you know where we have the old TIE fighters and by the way these are spring low shooters you know nothing too special there we get a spare one by the way but also we have this weapon up here this weapon that moves up and down it doesn't move side to side but I guess it couldn't because there's wings in the way but it does move up and down which is very cool I love the fact we get another extra little thing there. I don't know, it somewhat reminds me of a war machine, like having this thing over his shoulder or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know what it's about it, but this is very, very cool, very nice. I love that. I don't know why. Some of those little features which just really impresses me. I love it. I also love how the connection looks to the to the wings, to the thing. I just love all this. Alright, so the three openings. One is of course the main first bit where you get a pretty standard I can open it. It's a pretty standard cockpit. I'm sorry if you can't see that by the way. I, I really, I just can't get any light in, I'm sorry, I just, I, it's just not possible. But, um, yeah, there's no studs in there, so it kind of just slips around, but even so. There's also another one, again, the same as before. You can get more light in there, so that's good. Um, that stuff, pretty nice. By the way, of course, these are printed, you know, these are very nice. And we can open the back, which I don't think we've ever been able to do before. Look at this, it's so cool, doesn't it? Strictly speaking, I'm not sure you can see it, but you can actually see through that. There's a see-through windshield right there. So it is actually see-through. Very nice. You can open this up. I can. Open this up. And this is yet another, again, another cockpit. It's not really a cockpit in terms of you can fly it. I don't think you can. I mean, I don't really know. Of course, I haven't seen the film. Maybe you can. I think it's probably more for the weapons, because if you remember in the trailers, uh, sort of like that bit where it's kind of someone was flying one of these TIE fighters and blowing the place up. I think this is the view we saw of it because we've got two, three laser cannons or something shooting out. I think this is what these are, or there might be the engines. I'm not sure about that. 
Who knows? They might, I'll probably engine actually these two things, but even so. And you can see on the printing, the red goes with the red that, you know, goes along here. That's, that's very, very nice. I'm really loving that. Very nice indeed. I'm loving the design completely. Um, but yeah, actually, I think it's more like it to the set in and of itself. There's nothing massively more, as I said. Those little couple red things there are stickers, but that is basically it. And then you've got those stickers on each side. But that is it. all the stickers. There are no more stickers. That's amazing. Uh, this set, just, it, it's incredible. I love this set. I know it's really costly and stuff like that. And I know it's pretty similar to 2012 one. But it's not really Lego's fault. I mean, the day the design of the one in the film is just pretty similar to, it, to the, you know, original trilogy one. Just a lot of the designs of these vehicles just didn't change that much. It was only like 30 years ago or something. But, um, even so, oh my word, I recommend it. I would actually, in my opinion, it's the best car rider yet. I mean, really, I probably am glad I still got this. Unlike the Millennium Falcon, where I would sell Tan 11 one to get the new one, I would still keep this one, just because for nostalgia and other things, and the way it opens up and the other that. Also, by the way, you can see they're basically the exact same height. They're like one plate difference. Uh, just show you like this. Yeah, they're also the same width. It's, yeah. The dimensions of it are very similar, except I think for the cockpit is really where you can see the big difference. This is a lot, lot thinner than this, which feels a lot bulkier. It is a lot bulkier. This is a lot lighter. This feels sturdy. This feels powerful. This feels epic. But uh, yeah, so I think that's the main difference you can just see there. Very nice. Very nice. But yeah, more or less, just a little show how the colours have changed, but yeah. Um, yeah, more or less, quite frankly, I love the design of it, and I quite frankly, I'd say it's my favourite TIE Fighter as to date. Incredible, incredible. Of course, the TIE Fighter is a very classic vehicle, and I'm pretty sure this will make a big appearance in the new episodes, because of Comic Con, it's the TIE Fighter. It's like, how could it not be a big thing? But anyway, that is more or less it to the actual TIE Fighter then. I think it's just now move on to the instructions, the box, and conclude this review. Alright, so the instruction manual itself is pretty standard, nothing too much to say there. As with every instruction manual of this line, we only get one. That's pretty cool. In the back, we get another shot, uh, similar to a previous set we saw, I think, of the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter there. Very nice. Plus this thing here, we are know you make a poster, really? Can you, can you do that, make a poster? Maybe? I'm not sure if you can make a poster. I'm not sure how this works, but there you go. By the way, that's my code, if you really want to know. Apparently, I didn't, wasn't even aware you could have a code, but that's a code steal it if you so desire um, those are all the sets by the way got all of them apart from those two if you're wondering uh, and then, of course you've got the minifigures once again a lot of these are very very cool very nice and yeah more than six, just showing the features I showed you the, the fact that it's got fixed by missiles there and the fact it can open on both sides apparently you can stand on them is that how they get out? I don't know <laughs> but uh, yes this is very cool and there's the imagery and all this stuff, and like, you know, pretty simple build. This took me about an hour to build, so nothing massively, you know, special. Pretty standard build, but yeah, that's more or less the instructions, as I said, nothing incredible, the instructions as it goes. Um, but yeah, let's just now move on to the box. All right, so the box, the box is very nice. I mean, it's somewhat a little odd size, or just me, I don't know, something about it. Uh, it's pretty tall and pretty, well, actually box shape, funny enough, it's pretty square. I can't really fit the entire thing in frame because it's pretty tall, but even so, look in the corner, we've got, of course, the minifigures there, very nice, you know, we've got some box art, apparently it's a different planet, not the foggiest what planet this is, uh, desert planet of some sort, it's probably the same planet that Ray Speeder takes place on, I presume, um, but I don't know, going up, we just see here, get another shot of the minifigures, going round, we see the same features we saw in the back of the instructions, we've got the inventory, so of that, we've got the dimensions, and we've got a little shot there of the TIE Fighter going overhead, so very nice. Uh, yeah, more or less though, that is actually it to the box, of course it's a pretty standard box, I'm going to do special. I noticed by the way, with a lot of these boxes, they're fairly packed in, which I guess is good, uh, good to like, you know, save economy, you know, smaller boxes and stuff like that, like the bags are fairly packed in, and I don't really mind, I don't mind if the bags are squashed, it's different than the instructions are, I want the instructions in good condition. But some people are like, oh no, we don't want the bag squash. It's like, really? Come on, they're the bags. It's like, what's the big deal? But whatever. Anyway, that's much of the box. Let's just now go and conclude the review of this First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter.
Alright, so I want to thank you guys for watching my review of the first Order Special Forces TIE Fighter. As I've said, I really love this set. I think you probably guess how highly I'm going to rate this set. It's probably not the best set we've had, in my opinion. I do prefer Pose X Wing, and I do prefer uh, like the First Order other sets. Just because this one is very similar to 2012 one and stuff like that. But it is better. Do not get me wrong. It is better. Uh, if you've got a choice whether to buy this or the 2012 one, which seems like a bit of an odd choice, but I would still go for this one. I mean, the 2012 one has a lot going for it, the fact that it's just so classic. But I, in not um, like not the same as the Millennium Falcon, whereas I just say, oh no, forget the turn 11 one, just get the turn like 2015 one. I would still say pick up the 2012 one, even with this one, just for the sake of the nostalgia, just for the sake of the originals and the classic and just stuff like that. But even so, I actually do prefer the design of this. I love it. I can't wait to see it in episode 7. And it's an amazing set. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Actually, maybe a 9. Maybe a 9. Yeah. Yeah, you can make it with your own mind. Do you want to give it a 9 or an 8.5? Because I think it's a really good set. I'm so glad I got it. It is a little pricey. That I think that's the biggest con for it. But everything else for it is really, really cool. Everything else is really epic. If you can find it somewhat cheaper, then I highly recommend it. And if it's not a massive deal right now, if you want to get other sets, that's understandable. You can come back to this and hopefully it'll be a bit cheaper. And stuff like that. Maybe after your birthday or something. So you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> that's what I do. If I don't want to pay for a set, I just ask for my birthday. And my mum pays for it. So that's cool. But anyway, uh, yeah. So... Thank you guys for watching this review, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments or whatever down below. And of course, remember once again, tomorrow I'll be doing a live stream with another YouTuber where I'm doing a live Let's Build of the Transporter, as well as obviously a QA. and a You can ask me questions at the time. Uh, but yeah, more information in reviews to come. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time with another review. Bye, troops. Hey you judge me, they're back with another Lego Star Wars September, 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 yeah. But, I don't think we're going to sell that much. Maybe... Really? That's, uh, by the way, the fire alarm. Because he means my mum's cooking something.